Well, new evidence out about the expanding role of the CIA and of intensified counterterrorism counter efforts in Somalia. This is not simply a case of more agents on the ground there, but an increase of drone attacks, of targeted strikes, and most significantly, of, secret, of a secret prison run by the CIA. Just out in the Nation magazine, a new investigative report details how the CIA trains Somali intelligence agents and operatives and plans missions directed at members of the Islamic militant group Al-Shabaab, believed to have close ties to Al-Qaeda. Now, this is important because the article is called The CIA's Secret Sites in Somalia, and it was written by national security correspondent Jeremy Scahill. Scahill, of course, also wrote the uh, best-selling book, Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army. He's in our New York studios and joins us with a very inside look after spending 10 days on the ground in Somalia. Hey there, Jeremy. Uh, I guess I want to start by asking you about this secret prison. What does it look like? And more importantly, what's going on inside? Right. Well, uh, officially, the prison is run by the Somali National Security Agency. Um, but it, in a way, it's sort of a, a, a distinction without a difference um, because the CIA is paying the salaries directly uh, of Somali uh, intelligence agents, including those that work at this prison. Uh, the prison is inside the compound of what's called Villa Somalia, which is the green zone of sorts where the Somali, U.S. backed Somali government has its headquarters in Mogadishu. And it's housed in the basement of the National Security Agency, where there are also some CIA operatives based. And inside this dungeon prison, uh, there are, are no windows, there's no sunlight, uh, there's a bed bug infestation according to prisoners who've been there, mosquitoes uh, all over the place, the air is moist, thick and disgusting. Um, some prisoners are said to be losing their minds. Uh, there also were reports from prisoners that there were very young boys inside of the prison. Some people have been held for 18 months uh, without charge, without access to lawyers, without access to the Red Cross. In fact, the Red Cross told me that they were not aware of the prison and that they've never been given access to it. Um, and, and among those being held in the prison are people that were actually kidnapped, uh, snatched from neighboring Kenya by Kenyan intelligence officials and taken, rendered by aircraft to this prison in Mogadishu. Uh, my understanding also, and a U.S. official that I interviewed confirmed this, um, is that at least one prisoner there was taken based on U.S. intelligence provided to the Kenyan forces and then rendered to Somalia where he has been interrogated by U.S. Uh, interrogators. Uh, the Americans say that they don't directly interrogate the prisoners outside of the presence of Somali agents, and they prefer to call it debriefing instead of interrogation, but that's not what the Somalis who work with the CIA told me. They said the CIA directly interrogates prisoners whenever it wants. I think it's so interesting, Jeremy, that you, you sort of make this distinction of how there isn't actually a distinction. I mean, the U.S. is, is paying these people. They're present there. Uh, they're using the intelligence to lead to, to this. Uh, this was, to me, very shocking. And it's not just another CIA mission. This is the U.S. being involved in some way uh, of snatching people off the streets, as you said, of having them interrogated in well, a place considered to have, you know, the worst humanitarian disaster in the world. As you also said, there's no Red Cross. There's no journalists other than, uh, than you were there. Um, and no accountability. I guess I'm wondering why I didn't see you talking about this on every channel today. I, we're very happy to have you here, but do you think people realize the significance of this? Uh, well, I know for a fact that journalists from, uh, fact that journalists from uh, several major American news outlets were aware of these facilities um, in Mogadishu, and it's for those networks to answer why they've never reported on it, um, despite the fact that it's a, a very, very serious issue that should be investigated by Congress and, and the Red Cross and, in fact, the Obama administration itself. Um, but I, you know, I, I can't answer questions for other media outlets, but what I would say is that ABC News in particular uh, ran a story on their website, which is the, a huge media outlet in the United States, uh, ran a story on their website that completely mischaracterized my story and allowed the CIA to, um, to shoot down straw men arguments that I hadn't made uh, by asking them to respond to things that I didn't report. Um, both CNN and ABC have allowed their facilities, their media outlets, to be used as conveyor belts for the spin of the CIA. And that's the job of the CIA, and they do it well. Um, but the job of, of major media outlets should not be to be a conveyor belt for the propaganda of U.S. intelligence agencies. So I would leave those, uh, those questions for other media outlets as to why they're not reporting on this very serious life and death issue that has to do very much with the rule of law in this country and whether or not there's
there's been any change when it comes to respect of international human rights uh, laws and standards uh, or, or the U.S. Constitution. That's really interesting. I, I guess, Jeremy, any, anything that you want to clear up here um, that you feel like was mischaracterized about your story? Um, I'll, I'll give you that opportunity if you'd like it. Well, I mean, look, the, what, yeah, what, I mean, well, what, what happened is that, you know, a, a, some hack sitting in the, you know, Pentagon Bureau of ABC News uh, needs to justify his salary, and he, you know, either didn't read my article or just was uh, so easy to spin that it came natural to him when, the, when he was approached by a U.S. official, um, said that I had reported that the U.S. was running um, a, a counterterrorism detention facility uh, in Somalia. Uh, what I had reported is exactly what I said, and that is that the U.S. is paying the salaries of the Somali agents, that it is officially run by the Somalis, but that U.S. agents are able to openly interrogate them. They, ABC then made the focus of the story, we don't have any black sites, we're not running a black site um, inside of Somalia, and implied to that, that, that my story needed to be undermined because it wasn't true. The fact of the matter is that the Obama administration uh, announced in January of 2009, the president himself, that he was going to be shutting down these black sites. Leon Panetta, the, then the director of CIA, said in April of 2009 that he was decommissioning the black sites. And what I uncovered there is that the U.S. is, is using semantics to get around the fact that a black site is being utilized by the CIA. Whether they officially own the lease on the building is irrelevant. Mm -hmm. They're making use of that facility. So by not reporting the actual facts of what we reported, which no U.S. official will dis can dispute because they're true, ABC was a willing participant in a CIA spin operation. Let's talk about, uh, you mentioned, you know, the Obama administration and, and some of the ideas that they've touted. I, I know that one of, uh, you know, candidate Obama's biggest arguments w was talking about overturning some of these Bush-era policies. And, um, you know, I, I guess I thought during these last couple of years I was going to see some of these prisons shut down when, in fact, we're seeing new ones opening. Talk a little bit about that. Well, you know, <laughs> The Obama administration created this clause, I don't remember the exact phrase, but they said that there was some, something like special considerations that would allow them to continue all of those policies that they claimed to be against on the campaign trail. And so they're sort of using a loophole in their own rhetoric to justify it behind the scenes. And you know, what, what I think is of, of primary, should be a primary concern to, to uh, Americans that are concerned about rule of law um, is that as the U.S. expands its military operations and its covert operations in Somalia and elsewhere in East Africa, as well as in Yemen, uh, the administration should be required to define for the American people exactly what laws are governing these operations. Uh, for instance, there was a, um, a Somali man who was transferred in early July to New York who had been snatched off of a ship um, in the Gulf of Aden and taken for two months to a U.S. naval ship held incommunicado, without charge, with no access to lawyers. Now he's being charged in a federal court. When the Center for Constitutional Rights asked the Obama administration what legal justification they had to hold him in that manner, the administration didn't have an answer for it. So what we're seeing is President Obama, who himself is a constitutional law expert, uh, seeming to raise serious constitutional challenges with his own policies as commander-in-chief and as president. That totally true um, and very interesting, Jeremy. Um, I guess I, I got to ask you this, though. Uh, a lot of these much more targeted missions, they seem to be sort of the new era of this so-called war on terror. Many see the Osama bin Laden targeted killing as a successful one, uh, as something that, you know, they want to see more of. So I want to get your response to those who say this is exactly what the U.S. government should be doing, you know, gathering intelligence, carrying out missions aimed at terrorists, no matter where in the world they are. Right. Well, I mean, the, the Osama bin Laden hit uh, is, is, you know, going to be the stuff of lore in Hollywood films, and, and there's going to be the Kill Bin Laden movie, and Disney trademarked, literally trademarked the, the term SEAL Team 6, and that's what everyone's going to know about U.S. targeted killing and the Joint Special Operations Command, unless they actually are paying attention. What they don't know is that the same force that killed bin Laden uh, just a year earlier killed two pregnant women and an Afghan police official in a botched raid that was based on bad intelligence, turning that family against the United States. 
um, that there have been scores of night raids conducted by these forces in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Yemen, in Somalia, where innocent people have been killed, or when someone that they meant to kill was killed, but scores of innocent people were killed along with them. So if we're going to get into the business of making assassinations our norm, that's really what these are, assassinations, um, then we need to be ready for the blowback because we're creating a whole new generation of enemies that wouldn't normally have been our enemies because we've killed people in their family, especially those who have done no wrong and were the victims of bad intelligence. So All right. it's a very dangerous game, and it's become the Obama administration's policy. John Brennan announced it a few weeks ago, no more big occupations. We're, we're all in the business of surgical strikes, which is a code word for assassinations. All right, Jeremy Scahill, author and investigative journalist. If you haven't read his article in The Nation magazine, you should definitely check it out.